ladies and gentlemen, and being a producer of Wrestle Massacre, as well as Inside Movies Galore, I am David Stregi, and welcome to Delusions of Grandeur. Enjoy the reviews. I certainly did. That's it. Screw you and your college flunkies. I've had enough of this from you and from everyone else. I know what you guys are trying to do. Break me down, drive me out of the force. Well, it's going to take a hell of a lot more than a lame prank like this to get Curtis Mooney to throw in his badge. So fuck you. Over. Delusions of grandeur. And uh, uh, my name is David Streggy. Um, I'm your host. And... Uh, I have a long video collection uh, to show you. Um, I got a box from my friend Tito, and uh, I got several mails, uh, mailings in, in between then. And uh, since I've been going through some doctor's appointments and whatnot, I have, haven't gotten to this one. So the first big thing uh, that I want to show you um is actually um never going to be opened because if you see in the back behind those coffins there um in one of my videos i showed you the herschel gordon lewis arrow box set and in there is exactly the same thing except without this cool looking cereal box cover and uh, what these are, are um, this is what's in this particular thing. Now, this goes for like 200 bucks online. So I am never going to open uh, 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 this as far as I know beca uh, because it's just so cool to look at. It was from 2016. Uh, and uh, this is what it's got in here. Um, it's got Blood Feast, Scum of the Earth, 2000 Maniacs, Moonshine Mountain, Color Me Blood Red, Something Weird, The, uh, the Gruesome Twosome, A Taste of Blood, She Devil on Wheels, Just for the Hell of It, How to Make a Doll, The Wizard of Gore, The Gore Gore Girls, and This Stuff Will Kill Ya. Um, and uh, it says it's now with added interviews, featurettes, commentaries, shorts and much more so this is the herschel gordon lewis feast full of bloody goodness madness and carnage, ghastly beyond belief the goriest bloodiest pictures ever seen in blood color um so if you're a collector this is really cool to have and there were not a lot of these made so it's very uh, cool look, uh, looking, and this is actually going to go back up behind my Blind Dead collection up there, uh, up, uh, up there, uh, there with my coffin set, uh, sets, because I will like to display display that. Now, um, give me a second here while I uh, rearrange a few th uh, things. My fiance asked me to. Uh, look at a couple of things now he here's the next cool thing that came from um came from uh, T uh, uh tito's box um arrow uh, puts out a lot of nice really nice uh, 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 sets and uh this particular um edition of um crimson peak is actually really cool it's um 
I've got the UPC thing, unfortunately, on the separate thing. And then, let's see. There's the the cool cover. Definitely cool. Um, here's some booklets. Um, let's see. There's the disc. Uh, that, uh, that was uh, interesting to find out that the disc was all the way at the bottom there. But evidently, this particular set has a little booklet that uh, that is in this coat of arms looking uh, 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 thing. Now, I actually enjoy this story. It's kind of like a turn of the screw kind of a story where... Um, a young woman who evidently uh, falls in love with uh, with uh, another, uh, a young man who happens to have a somewhat unhealthy relationship with his sister, and they all live in this decrepit house that evidently is filled with the bodies of some of the people that have kept them alive for as long as they have, and... Um, the young man uh, just so happens to be Tom Middleston um, as an actor, and uh, he is um, uh, an engineer who uh, evidently has this idea for a machine, and he tries to show it to uh, the young woman's father. He uh, doesn't accept it, and uh, evidently there, uh, uh, has seen what uh, what the sister um, had done and uh, didn't want his daughter any, anywhere near and uh, basically ordered him off the property. Well, um, evidently the sister ended up murdering uh, the, the father who actually was uh, 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 played by um, well, um, a very interesting actor because uh, uh, he was from Super Supernatural. Um, he uh, he, he's he's played in uh, uh, a Larry Blamire fil film, and uh, he, I just remember him uh, for being comical with his idiot <laughs> comment on Supernatural. But uh, in any case, um, I really like the graphics and the eff eff effects of the the ghosts that were or in the house that uh, the young couple ended up uh, living in. And um, I thought that um, it was very creepy. Uh, the effects were really cool. And uh, this was a really nice addition for Arrow to put, uh, put out. So uh, I really recommend that um, for you as collectors out there. So there we have Crimson Peak, um, the limited edition copy that Arrow put out. Okay, uh, the, ne oh, the next interesting thing that came from the um, Tito box is um, Abominable. They, they, I believe Abominable was a separate fi a film. It was a kind of a Bigfoot snow beast uh, kind of a film. And uh, it came out on a Blu-ray DVD D retro looking thing on the MVD Rewind Collection. I haven't opened this yet. Not sure if I am. Because I do have a copy of it on a DVD. But this is a collector's edition DVD that came out. Um, let's see. Uh, now... I didn't have these on uh, uh, Blu-ray per se, so I'm going to, okay. So these three are Blu-rays from the Long Dead Legless Quartz films. Um, these were three of the last um, f films that might have been actually on LegglessQuartzFilms.com, uh, which was run by Chad Armstrong. Uh, what he would do is he would have a festival every year uh, for independent fil uh, filmmakers, and um, he would also be able to stick um, filmmakers' films on uh, Blu-ray and DVD and distribute them for maybe 50 to 100 copies. 
at, at any given point in time. Uh, one of these first one, uh, uh, ones, um, this one is A Wish for the Dead. And I believe the DVD came and the Blu-ray came with a, po a poster. Um, and I have the poster some, uh, somewhere myself. Um, but um, I ended up uh, getting a copy of the, uh, the Blu-ray from um, Tito. Uh, so John Hill, Chris Petty, is a desperate man since discovering his wife has terminal cancer and has locked himself in the, ho uh, in the hospital and is looking for any shred of hope that can save his young wife from her suffering. That is when he meets the man, played by Robert Hatfield, um, who offers him a way to beat death. John's actions will affect the lives of several other players in our tale in the process. A single mother who is being stalked, played by Julie Strabble. A teenage girl who is being brutally bullied at school, played by Lori Cook. And an innocent man on death row, played by Adam Pepper. And a young girl who is losing her grandmother, played by Kristen Renee Farley. Like Pulp's uh, fiction and Trick or Treat, this horrifying drama features multiple victims who are intertwined and connected by, uh, 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 by one central event, and the world will never be the same again. The debut film from writer-director Nathan Thomas Milner, um, A Volumes of Blood and The Confession of Fred Krueger. So there we go. There we have it. A Wish for the dead. Um, next, I have a film that was directed by Natu Numui, and uh, this uh, these this Blu-ray was number seventy out of a hundred. Um, it's called uh, Deadly Birthday Party. Eat that bloody cake. Um, a mysterious Avenger turns up in the neighborhood, driven by her strong longing for justice. She has made it her duty to eliminate every criminal, liar, and traitor in her area who is a threat to society and innocent individuals. After her de uh, death, uh, dead is done, um, she begins to tell the tale uh, of another Avenger and who seems to be in a similar situation, but who's Motives are a lot different. Marissa's 18th birthday is coming up. Marissa, uh, Marissa's and her guests spend a good time together, drinking and laughing during this time. Marissa feels betrayed, and she gets to know the truth about her friends. As they are getting drunk, they don't realize that Marissa can hear them. And she then realizes more and more how her friends are plotting behind her back. Marissa's mood changes. She begins to hate them and starts to take revenge. So, there we have it. Deadly birthday party. Uh, I was, at the time, I was fairly impressed with it. Um, for almost like an all-girls slumber par uh, party that turns into, uh, uh, to, okay, I found out every uh, one of my friends, hey, it's me, okay, let's kill them all <laughs> kind of uh, kind of a thing and then lastly and not leastly the slayers portrait of a dismembered family the limited to the special edition this film is directed by alex Perret from 2014. um the slayer family made scandalous national press headlines when patrick son of the uh Right uh, Honorary Stanley Slayer uh, claimed his father killed a young woman during a satanic ritual and was forced to film the murder. Stanley says Patrick wanted to make a horror movie. So with the help of the of family and uh, friends and bucket loads of fake blood, they did. Who was telling the truth, Patrick or Stanley? Th so this was a mockumentary that... Um... It was set like a found on footage film in, in a sense and um, in an interview kind of a style and uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it at the uh, time and so I told Tito that I wouldn't mind 
uh, having a copy of it on Blu-ray. Um, so, um, moving on to, uh, let's see. All right, so I've been slowly but surely collecting some of these films directed by uh, Dustin Wade Mills. Um, so the, uh, the first one is The Hornet's Sting and the Hell It's Caused and The Hornets and the Scars She Left. Um, so in this first one, The Hornet's Sting and the Hell It's Caused, this is the story of Rose. Rose is, the, uh, is a photographer who specializes in bondage, degradation, dehumanization, and murder. She lures unsuspecting men into her grasp and breaks them down until there, there is nothing left. This is a mean and stylish exploration into human degradation, exploration, murder, and what can happen when someone is stripped of their dignity and humanity. This film is uh, directed by Dustin Wade Mills. I, for one, have tried to become a friend of Dustin Wade Mills, and as far as I know, even though his films are out to the public, uh, he doesn't seem to be very, very friendly to, uh, towards those who seem to be um, avid fans of his, at least on my end. I mean, it seems like he has enough uh, 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 fans of his that he doesn't seem to th uh, think that, uh, you know, I or anyone else um, is worthy of being friends with him. So, um, I don't know what uh, what what his uh, deal is. I've tried to add him. I've tried to contact him when I've watched a few of his films. And uh, maybe one day I will get noticed by him. Maybe I won't. And he just won't take notice. I've been trying to be one of those people who will tell you the truth about these films and not just go on them and shit on them. So, that being said, here's a couple of collections that came out of, uh, uh, about Donald Farmer short films, I believe. Um, this is the Donald Farmer Collection, Volume 1 and Volume 2 from SRS Cinema. <coughs> so on volume one, we have uh, The Summoned and A Taste of Flesh. Uh, according to here, two tales uh, from the mind of Do Donald Farmer uh, in The Summoned. A doctor and his wife come under attack from a vengeful incubus and his uh, zombie followers in a blood soaked tale of supernatural horror can this man of uh, science stand up against a human creature with limitless power um then in a taste of flesh when two friends are lost on a mountain uh, hunting trip, one of them kills and eats the other in order to survive. So kind of like a Donner Party of Five kind of thing. Uh, but now he has a permanent taste for human flesh and needs more victims to feed on. Once back in civilization, the cannibal's wife has no clue about the murder spree he plans to unleash to feed his flesh-eating urges. So there you go. There you have it. Uh, that's uh, uh, what is on volume one. On volume two, um, we have four other small films. Uh, Fishbowl Pasta. Uh, Despondent Yearning. Homicidal. And Interspersions. In a fistful of a, a, a pasta, three comical cowboys set off on a per perilous journey, climaxing in a three-way gun duel. Um, in Despondent Yearning, a one-night stand leads to romantic obsession and murder. Uh, in Homicidal, an ab uh, ab abusive father accidentally kills his small daughter and tries to cover up the crime. This sets the stage for a violent co uh, confrontation between the killer and and his wife's boyfriend. 
And uh, last not not least, interspersions. Uh, two girls are living a hippie lifestyle in a country house, but soon the walls between reality and fantasy start to blend until no one is sure what's really happening. So there we have it, uh, Donald, uh, the Donald Farmer Collection, Volume 2. Now, uh, next, um, I have a couple of Code Red films here, uh, which, uh, give me a moment, I'm just going to gather them up. Um, Code Red fil uh, films here, where... Yep, these are cold red too. Um, so I have here a sexy double feature, um, and it's got those mad, mad movie makers. And uh, gosh, it's me, Alice Goodbye or Goodby. So in those mad, mad movie makers, two men wanting to make a porno movie raise money from their family and friends by claiming that they're making a religious film. Complications ensue when the porno is a hit in this comedy uh, uh, starring veterans Michael P uh, Pataki from Brood Corpse, Grave of the Vampires, Sweet 16, uh, Mike Kellen, and Just Before Dawn, Sleepy with Camp, Midnight Express, uh, Tom Signa uh, Signorelli uh, from Alice Sweet Alice, Thief, Mariana Hill, uh, uh, Messiah of Evil, Traveling Executioner, and uh, Joseph Sipari from Partners. And, uh, gosh, it's me, Alice Goodby. This uh, wild 70s sex comedy follows the exploits of a greasy spoon waitress. Alice Goodby, or Good Body, um, star of uh, Super Vixens and Ilsa, um, as she sleeps her way to stardom via encounters with the cast and crew of a rock musical production of Julius Caesar. It had it's bad luck for Alice, though, because while she sleeps to get to the top, a series of mishaps on the set keeps getting her injured and delaying production. It's a ribald sex comedy romp that Roger Corman called hilarious. The funny truest funniest truest take on Hollywood ever. Hollywood will never be the same as Alice sleeps her way to the silver screen. If she can make it, make it out alive, co-starring Vic Caesar, du Duke Mitchell's mafia, uh, uh, Massacre Mafia style, and uh, George Blackflower from Adventures of the Wilderness Family. So, there we have it. Alice Goodbody and those mad, mad movie makers. Next, I have a Necromancy. Which uh, Necromancy is actually um, directed by Bert I. Gordon, um, and uh, if you don't know who he is, he is a Wisconsin filmmaker. That um, well, here we go. I'm, I'm going to read about it. Um, a wicked necromancer, played by Orson Welles uh, of Citizen King, The Magnificent Andersons, and The Third Man, controls an entire room, forcing its residents to make the special toys he needs to cast his evil spells. This horror outing uh, follows what happens when the dastardly wizard, hoping to in, in, in resurrect his dead son by stealing the soul of another, sets his sights on the wife, Pamela Franklin, from Legend of the Legend of Hell House and Food of the Gods. Uh, Food of the Gods was, in fact, a Bird Eye Gordon film, uh, of his new empl employee. Um, also starring Michael Antkin, uh, from Slapshot, Making Love, uh, and Made to Order, and Lee Persho, uh, for, uh, from Mr. Majestic, Adam at 6am, Dirty Little Billy. This cult 70s shocker is finally available in its rare original cut, as intended by director Bert I. Gordon, um, director of Empire of the Ants, The Mad Bomber, and The Village of the Giants. So... There we go, Necromancy. For a long time, uh, that movie was circling around for quite a long time for uh, in collector groups. I'm glad I actually have a copy so that I can watch it down the road. Um, next, I have Fox Bait or Fox Bat um, from Code Red as well, as you can see. Code Red has been, kind of become a name, uh, but um, okay. So here we go. Um, 
There is an international race to obtain bl blueprints of a MIG-25 Fox uh, Bat Soviet fighter plane which has landed in Japan. An undercover U.S. spy, Saxon Henry Silva, uh, Johnny Cool and Trapped, has managed to take photos of the jet planes with a camera hidden in his left eyeball and now must get the microfilm back to his country. They're competing uh, are representatives from many countries trying to do the same thing too, and at one point, there is even a super secret auction of the pl uh, plans. The KGB is not taking this uh, situation sitting down, and agents are dispatched to de uh, destroy the plans and anyone who has them. The search and destroy mission action uh, moves from Tokyo to Hong Kong as the U.S. agents attempt to contact a man who can arrange for the proper delivery of the microfilm. Inspired by a true story, this action-adventure thriller was the talk of the Kenneth Films Festival in 1977, as it has a very high budget for an independent Hong Kong film. Uh, Vonetta uh, McGee, the Iger Sanction, Rick Von uh, Netter uh, from uh, 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 from Thunderball and Roy Chiao from Gain of Death, co-star directed by Pai Chi Leong, um, uh, director of Cabin by the Lake, I think. And uh, evidently, this uh, the special feature of, the, of this has a brand new high def master from the original 35 millimeter, uh, and an audio commentary by the director and writer Po Chi Leong with some deleted scenes. So there we have it. Fox Bat. And there are some pictures. Kind of cool. Alrighty. So uh, next um, I have... Um, oh. Uh, though I already have the uh, Toxic Avenger in a, in a box set. Um... I do not have the Japanese version. This is the this is longer than the U.S. director's cut. So evidently, the U.S. could not handle the original longer cut. So I am curious down the road, um, what that's all about, um. Wolf House. Six friends on a camping trip think they uh, have discovered and killed a Sasquatch, but what have they really unleashed, and is something more evil, more ancient, and more deadly than they could ever imagine? An army of supernatural terrors that will hunt them down until no one remains. Uh, this is directed by Matt D. Uh, D. Lord, and uh, it stars Jessica Bell, Ken Constantino, Marcus Gansi Rotella, Elizabeth Houlihan, Bill Kennedy, Mark Sturdivant, Rick Williams, and so on and so forth. So, here I have a Robert, a Roger Corman uh, film called The Terror Within. And uh, it's got George, uh, George Kennedy and Andrew Stevens. It was directed by Theory Nuts. In the grueling aftermath of a chemically induced plague that wipes out most of the world, the only survivors are a small group of scientists trapped in a laboratory 500 feet, uh, feet below the ground in the Mojave Desert, but they are not alone. Academy Award winner George Kennedy, The Naked Gun, and Cool Hand Luke Stars as Hal, leader of the group. Andrew Stevens, the Fury in 10 to Midnight, plays David, the young hotshot who rescues a lone uh, woman survivor only to make a shocking discovery. She's pregnant. She's due, and it's not human. The dwindling survivors, mankind's last hope, must fight a desperate, deadly battle against the ever-growing, ever-bolder mutant. Terror within. So let me move these over here. 
while I... Uh, go through a few more here. So I have this midnight horror show, the Master Collection. So I actually have the, uh, the first one on here, uh, like in several different collections. Apparently, Columbia River Entertainment Group has put together this collection. Uh, Bane, an, 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 an experiment in human suffering. Nina, crazy suicide girl. Crowbar, the killings of Wendell Graves, the defiled. Lady of the Dark, Genesis of the Serpent Vampire. Um, one hour to die, you have all been poisoned. And uh, fast zombies with guns. So... I'm assuming that, uh, well, that's seven features. And uh, seven features on two different discs. So, um, four women, uh, uh, this is Bane, four women awake, uh, wake, awake in an underground cell with amnesia. One by one, the surgeon cuts a four-digit number into each horrified woman's skin, the exact time he will return to kill them. Uh, in uh, Nina, uh, an underground uh, underworld of deprivation, mixing extreme Asian and Italian cult movies from the 70s, Nina, Crazy Suicide Girl, is an adrenaline-pumped film that reeks of sex, magic, and gore. Uh, Crowbar, the killings of Wendell Graves. Wendell Graves watches in horror as a masked man brutally murders his parents with a crowbar 15 years later. Wendell seeks revenge upon humanity, killing the new residents. In the defiled, science and, and technology have backfired, leaving a permanent diseased planet in its wake. A virus is mutating the human race, turning innocent survivors into mindless cannibals. Um, in Lady of, uh, of the Dark, Genesis of the Serpent Vampire, Eve is an unsuspecting married woman. Uh, it, and is selected for the rebirth and transformed into the Lady of the Dark, emerging as a ravenous, instinctual killer who shows no mercy. Uh, one hour to die, you have all been poisoned. A surprise birthday party for a friend turns into a nightmare when each partygoer begins to show signs of poisoning surprise. You all have just one hour to die. And in Fast Zombies with Guns, a small town is overrun by incredibly fast armed and loaded bullet sprayed, uh, spraying zombies as one resilient band of people fight to survive the mindless cannibal onslaught. So that is uh, what all seven on this particular um, film collection say. Now, I have these two, I believe, on two separate... Uh, or actually, I have them, I believe, on a 50-pack. But um, for some reason, I was curious of what Katrina, um, who is a horror hostess, kind of like a Vampira or um, something of that na nature. Um, it's an American Grindhouse double bill. First up is Lurkers from cult director Robert Finley, for, uh, director of Snuff. Comes a psychological thriller about a beautiful young... New York Celeste, whose demonic childhood nightmares have returned, plunging her into a horrific series of events that threaten her success, her sanity, and her life. Now see the horror from a brand new 16x9 master from the original IP for the first time anywhere. Um, next up, uh, Die, Sister Die, a man, Jack, uh, g g played by Jack Ging, from S Hires a Nurse, Antoinette Bauer, uh, Bauer from Prom Night to care for his alien but nasty and shrewish sister. What he really intends to do, however, is convince the nurse to join him in a plot to kill her. Watch this film for the first uh, official authorized DVD release from a brand new master from the original neg negatives for the uh, first time anywhere. 
Uh, so there we have it. Lurkers and die, sister die. Curious. I'm curious about the transfers. Uh, in any case, um, I don't have Hotel Transylvania two, but I do have Hotel Transylvania, and I uh, and I do do now have Hotel Transylvania th uh, three. That is Dracula and uh, his daughter and his uh, son-in-law. They all kind of go on vacation and. Uh, I love how Dracula is Adam Sandler. <laughs> In any case, uh, uh, so next I have uh, Exterminators of the Year 3000. So this was part of a post-apocalyptic collection that was part of a box set at one point in time. And uh, I realized this was the missing title that um, I was looking, uh, looking for that I did not have from that um, particular thing. And this is... Uh, from Code Red. Um, it is the year 3000 and a nuclear war uh, has turned uh, has turned the earth into a de desert desert wasteland. Uh, a group of survivors living in a cave run out of uh, run out of water and desperately need to locate a new supply. The last guy they sent out to find water never returned and now his 10-year-old son T uh, Timmy wants to join the next ser uh, search team. They think they know where there's an untapped well of water, but to get there, they have to travel through the dangerous terrain, controlled by a savage gang of motorcyclists, under the bloodthirsty reign of Crazy Bull. On their mission, Timmy and his team run into a, lo a lonesome stranger named Alan, Alien, Robert Ionushi, who may be able to help them against the marauding motorcycles. Can the struggling survivors looking for water in this barren world defeat Crazy Bull and his exterminating minions? Hang on, light, uh, light. The battle has just begun. The post-apocalyptic cult classic action film is finally out on DVD. And this is uh, an Italian director because uh, it's directed by Guiliano Carnameo. Or at least that's what the uh, the name of the th uh, uh, the thing sounds uh, like. So there we have it. There's that uh, that one. Alrighty. Now he also uh, uh, sh uh, showed me th uh, this particular film, but I al already have it. It's gonna go in my double sp uh, pile to get ri uh, rid of. It's called the Soul Tangler. Um, the reflecting skin. This one is directed by Philip Ridley. Looks kind of cool. Gonna check that out. The lady in the car with glasses and a gun. A Blu-ray. This one is directed by Valerie Linden. Uh, this one uh, is from the Draft House the Alamo. Uh, Draft House Films. And it's directed by Karen Kusama. The Invitation. In this tout uh, psychological thriller by Karen Kusama, director of Girl Fight and Jennifer's Body, the tension is palpable when Will from Logan, Marshall uh, uh, Green, and uh, Pr Prometheus shows up to a dinner party hosted by his ex-wife, Eden, played by Tammy Blanchard, Into the Woods, and new husband, David, played by Michael Hoosman from Game of Thrones. The estranged divorce sees a uh, tragic past, haunts an equally eerie presence amid Eden's suspicious behavior and her mysterious house guests. Will becomes convinced that his invitation was extended with a hidden agenda unfolding over one dark evening in the Hollywood Hills the invitation blurs layers of mounting paranoia mystery and horror until both will and the audience are unsure what threats are real or imagined so there we have it the invitation 
This actually has a Blu-ray combo set um, and seems to be actually a little heavy. So I'm uh, definitely curious about that particular film. Here's another Arrow uh, film called The Fifth Chord. Um, the success of Dario Argento's The Bird and the Crystal Pl Plumer image ushered, ushered in a host of imitators seeking to capitalize on this new modern take on the Giolo, G uh, Giolo uh, thriller. Many were hi uh, highly derivative, but a number nonetheless rose above the crowd uh, thanks to skillfully ex uh, a skillful execution and a willingness to experiment stylistically. Once such an uh, uh, once su such example is the fifth chord, which in the hands of director Luigi Bazzani, the possessed, and footprints on the moon, turns a conventional premise into a visually stunning exploration of alienation and isolation. When a man barely survives a brutal assault and root home from a New Year's party, washed up, whiskey sw uh, swelling journalist Andrea Bild, Franco Nero from Django, is assigned to report on the case. Before long, the maniac strikes again, this time with fatal results. As the body counts, uh, count rises, Andrea f uh, follows, falls under suspicion himself, making it even more imperative that he crack the case. His only clue lies in a series of black gloves found at the location of every attack, each with a finger cut off. Adapted from a novel by David MacDonald uh, Devine, the fifth chord boasts a complex Agatha Christie-esque plot. Outla outstanding cinematography, courtesy of future Oscar-winning Vittorio Storaro, uh, um, who worked on Apocalypse Now, and supporting appearances by a raft of genre stalwarts, including Sylvia Monti from A Lizard in the Woman's Skin, Edmund Purdom from Nightmare City, and uh, Rosella Falk from Sleepless, debuting here, here in high definition, arguably the most visually stunning Giello ever made, now shines like never before. So there we have it, the fifth chord. Should be interesting to check out. Now, here is my fav uh, favorite title. I have not seen this uh, film, but it is also a rarity. I would never seen it before um, talking to Tito. And evidently, only 50 of these were ever made. This is number, as you can see, 36 out of 50. And uh, it was directed by Scott Wayne, uh, uh, Scott Swan, and Wayne Burgess. Um, and evidently, it was sold on Totag. It's called The Complete Retard. And what this has on here is the unreleased first film, Miami Creeper, the original classic, Retard Abortion, the all-new sequel, Retard 2, an interview with Mary Jane and Sena, behind the scenes, photo gallery, deleted uh, material, outtakes reel, a Retard Abortion soundtrack, the Retard Abortion trailer, plus an all-new a first look at Eat It All, the new feature from Evil Flicks. So Evil Flicks was evidently something that was, a, uh, Evil Flicks Studios was something that was around at one point in time. So I wonder if Eat It All is out there at all. So from Swain, the disturbing minds behind Big Junior comes a twisted vision of retarded perversion. The complete retard. <laughs> I've never even heard about uh, 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 this until, uh, until my friend told me about it. This is nuts. 
I mean, come on now. <laughs> so, next I have um, a film called Red Tragedy. And this is definitely a gore film. It is directed by Akiko Genos. And uh, was limited to 300 copies. And this was from a Baroque house. Uh, this is volume two of evidently whatever it's from. It's, at least it says it is. So that's all I know about, uh, about it, but it looks freaky as all hell. So there we have it, Red Tragedy. So next I have Munger Road. Munger Road is directed by Nicholas Smith. On the evening of October 7th, four teenagers from the town of St. Charles, uh, Illinois, uh, uh, venture out to a dark, mysterious road where legend has it that the train uh, tracks have been uh, haunted for years. Unbeknownst to, uh, known to them, while the small town uh, prepares for their annual uh, Scarecrow Festival the next day, a child murderer from the past has escaped, imprisoned, and his whereabouts are unknown. The police chief and his deputy begin a search in fear that the murderer has returned home. Uh, at the same time, the teenagers become stuck on Munger Road, unable to call for help, as the police con uh, collect more suspicious evidence about the child murderer, we slowly realize that the haunting of Munger Road is directly connected to his murderous past. The race is on as the chief realizes the teenagers are missing and could be in grave danger. As the police search for both the killer and the kids, they realize that the horror hasn't even begun yet. So there we have it, Munger Road. And then, of course, there's Mortuary. Mortuary. This is a Scorpion releasing uh, released film. And uh, it is directed by Howard Avidis. Uh, Bill Paxton, uh, Christopher George, and Linda Day uh, George uh, star in this chilling tale of horror filled nightmares that comes startlingly, uh, startlingly close to reality. Christy, per, uh, Christy Parson, uh, Mary McDonough of the Waltons, has been having terrifying nightmares ever since her father drowned in the family swimming pool. She knows his death was not an accident, but no one believes her. That is until her boyfriend, Greg, played by David Wallace, from Humongous, uh, sees a hooded figure uh, identical to the one that Christy has described as being in her nightmares in the town's mortuary. Greg and Christy's curiosity plummets them into a series of bizarre and terror-filled circumstances at the mortuary, a dark and ghastly place run by, uh, by, uh, circ uh, run by a Mr. Andrews, played by Christopher George from Gates of Hell, Pieces, TV's Rat Patrol, and his son, Paul, uh, played by Bill Pax uh, Paxton, who played in Apollo 13, uh, Near Dark, uh, TV's Big Love. And C uh, Christy will soon discover the ghastly truth behind her father's death. But in doing so, she may not live to see the morning. Linda Day George and L.B. Moore also star in this twisted tale of the macabre. Now, in a brand new a HD transfer from the original in hang on for dear life as you now have an appointment at the mortuary where no one rests in peace so there we have it mortuary now i believe that uh, except for this particular um vhs which i have no idea what's on it or or anything. Uh, um, it's called Dreamcastle. 
No clue what's on it, but look at the cover. <laughs> Have no idea. He sent this with. Oh my god. No clue, but uh, but I'm I'm curious down the road what uh, what, what it could be. Um, it's a mystery. So um, I'm gonna show you some uh, some films that actually came uh, from David Sterling. Um, Two of them came in the ma uh, mail uh, last week, and then two of them uh, came just recently, I believe, on Friday. So, um, and uh, I ended up putting uh, money into a horror film called Bride of the Werewolf. And if you look closer, I'm going to show you. Uh, I He actually sent me a Blu-ray and two DVDs, but I, uh, I actually sent one, or gave one to the Crypt of Horrors um, a, a dude, uh, who, who, his name is Dustin, and he um, talks with me on my podcast or whatnot. Well, anyways, if you look really close here, in the spot of the co-producer, we have David Streggy. And uh, I believe it says so on the back here. Uh, and uh, it's Mark Polonia that um, has uh, directed this. So, um, mysterious and bloodthirsty killings plague the countryside while traveling abroad for a thesis pro uh, 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 projects. Two women uh, are robbed and nearly raped on a desperate, uh, desolate road, but an unseen person intervenes, killing one of the assailants. Looking for a place to call for help as the car is now damaged, the women take refuge at the desolate home of Saul Ashley. In, in love with Saul, one of the women agrees to take him back to the city, where her father may, may be able to assist. He is working on the resurrection secrets of, of the pharaohs and has an actual mummy in his possession. The doctor intends to use Saul's lycanth lycanthropic blood to aid in his quest. The doctor's plan, uh, plan backfires when the mummy once revived goes on a killing spree, and only the werewolf can stop it. A battle between monsters ensues. I am so glad that I, uh, I put money towards this pr uh, production. Um, and there's the DVD. I still kept a Blu-ray and a, D a, a DVD. I gave out one, a, 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 a one just for kicks, um, just because I'm friends with uh, the, the, the Crypt of Ho uh, Horrors guy. Uh, and then uh, next is uh, I have a different copy with a different cover of the, uh, of this film. So I'm glad that he s uh, sent this with. But this is Ghost of Camp Blood. And this is also another Mark Polonia uh, 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 film. It is a spin-off film of the Camp Blood uh, uh, series. Mark Polonia has uh, done really well with uh, 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 this series. But anyways, infamous Blackwood for uh, Forest is still haunted by the numerous deaths in the, uh, uh, at the hands of a clown mask killer. But now it's haunted by something else. The vengeful spirit of the recently deceased Camp Blood Killer is out for revenge from beyond the grave. A down-and-out paranormal talk show host and his faithful assistants attempt to contact the killer with deadly results. The ghost of Camp Blood takes the series into a whole new terrifying direction. How can you kill something that's already dead? So, uh, speaking of Mark Polonia, um, uh, th this is another uh, film that Mark Polonia has done. It's called the Yeti Experiment, and uh, here we have. Uh, originally, it was called Frozen Sasquatch. Um, scientists investigate mysterious disappearances at a research base where it has been report, uh, 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 reported a savage creature was spotted. The team discovers the dark secrets and the experiments being secretly performed and the deadly outcome. <coughs> a lone survivor is not who she appears to be, and clues to the massacre at the base lead to a shocking discovery. 
ending in uh, destruction and an out of uh, out of this world encounter produced by david sterling and mark polonia the yeti experiment and that's actually a cool um case or what or whatnot and there are some uh photos of this uh, cre uh creature i'm loving it um so in the wild uh this particular box set is uh, uh, uh was one of the crux of the nazi exploitation films and uh i found it in very a very decent condition it uh normally goes for, for over a hundred bucks um and it's the ilsa box set um it has she wolf of the ss um, harem keep, uh, uh, keeper of the oil sheiks and the wicked warden. Um, meet Ilsa, the incredible uh, Nazi commandant whose shocking uh, sexual appetites are matched only by her insane lust for brutality. This is the controversial classic that started it all, secretly filmed after hours on the sets of Hogan's Heroes. Uh, harem keep, uh, keeper of the oil seekers. Ilsa returns in as the mastermind behind a Middle Eastern white slavery ring, protected by lethal weapon, uh, weapon uh, uh, lethal lesbian bodyguards. But when an American diplomat threatens to expose her depraved desires, Ilsa ignites an eye-popping holy war of unspeakable, uh, unspeakable sexual horror. And in the Wicked w Warden, Ilsa is back as the sadistic ruler of a jungle hellhole prison, where the violence of the doomed meets the passion of the damned. Luscious Lena Romay, barred wire dolls, who stars in this jaw-dropping filth fest, directed by the infamous Jess Franco, Vampiros Lesbos. So, let me pull these out. We've got she Wolf of the SS. Harem of the Oil Sheiks. And Ilsa, the Wicked Warden. And these are all part of this Anchor Bay box set. I thought that uh, this was really cool to find um, at Exclusive Company. So um, moving on to what else I found, uh, found uh, there at Exclusive Company. I also, uh, what, what else did I, uh, I no, I, I only bought that there. So at Half Price Books, um, I found these. Um, uh, I actually had some of these on hold. So, this is a pirate collection. Um, I believe that they're Hammer, or uni they're Universal Pirate movies. Uh, the first one on here is called Against All Flags. Next one is Buccaneer's Girl. Uh, next one after that is Yankee Buccaneer, and the, uh, the last one on, on this collection is called Double Crossbones. Um, I've watched the first two so far, and uh, the first one has a British naval officer played by Errol Flynn, and that's Errol Flynn when he was older, um, actually. I remember him being a lot younger in The Adventures of Robin Hood. Uh, is unjustly condemned for uh, a desert desertion and finds redemption with a rascally pirate captain, Anthony Quinn, and a beautiful buccaneer, Marine O'Hara. What's interesting is at the, uh, this point in time, Marine O'Hara must have either worked on the Quiet Man set, either before this or after this, because there is a, a, another woman in this film that... Uh, um, I believe also played in my favorite John Wayne film, The Quiet Man. Um, then we have the Buc uh, Buccaneers gir uh, uh, Girl, 
Love walks the plank when an ambitious New Orleans entertainer, uh, Giovanni De Carlo, uh, discovers that the aristocratic playboy she's fallen for has a secret identity as a legendary pirate. And if you don't know who Giovanni De Carlo is, um, <laughs> she play, plays Lily Munster in the Munsters. Uh, so, um, uh, I'm not going to tell you about the other two, uh, two on here, but I've mentioned the titles, so definitely check this um, per uh, particular uh, collection out. It, it, it's uh, definitely stuff to watch before you watch Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> because Hollywood, how they portrayed some of the pirates then, was a little bit different than how they portray pirates now. Um, next, I have an out-of-print tri uh, trilogy. Um with uh, Paul Newman. And uh, the first one I have here is uh, The Hustler, where it's got Paul Newman and Jack Gleason. Um, the Long Hot Summer, which has Paul Newman, Joan Woodward, and uh, Fr uh, Frank, uh, Frank Kilsa, and uh, Paul Newman in The Verdict. So, when his boyish grin and laid back lo uh, looks, Fast Eddie Felsen has fleeced his share of pool hall gamblers. Now the brash pool shark is after the king of the Q-stick, Minnesota Fats, played by Jack Gleason. But after losing to Fats in a grueling 36-hour match, Eddie hits the skids. Only the intervention of a ruthless gambler, played by George C. Scott, who takes his, uh, his claim to Eddie's soul, can teach this hustler the cruel art of winning. Uh, the Long Hot Summer, uh, directed by Martin Ritt. The Long Hot Summer is based on three William Faulkner stories and marks the first on-screen teaming of Newman and Woodward. Featuring an all-star cast, including Paul Newman, Joan Woodward, and Orson Welles and Lee, uh, Lee Remick, this smoldering story from the Deep South is filled with sexual tension, body humor, and powerfully clashing personalities. When suspected barn burner Ben Quick, played by New uh, Newman, drifts into a town dominated by Will Warner, played by Wells, he is recruited to uh, husband Varner's spinster daughter, played by Woodard, Woodward, so that Varner can keep an eye on him. But the two men soon lock horns, and ultimately a chain of events Leaves them all changed forever. And in the verdict, Sidney Lumet's uh, riveting courtroom drama uh, earned l five Oscar nominations, including Best Picture and Best Actor, for Paul Newman's towering performance as an alcoholic ambulance chasing attorney. When Frank Galvin, played by Paul Newman, inherits an impossible to win medical malpractice case. He outrageously refuses a settlement and instead takes the case and the entire legal system to court. James Mason, Jack Warden, Milo O'Shea, and Charlotte Rampling co-star. So there we have it. Those three milestone films. Next, I already have this on DVD. So I don't know why I picked this up, but uh, this is Shout Factory's The Strangers, and uh, uniquely I found it with still with its, um, still with its uh, outside casing, which uh, is rare to find. Uh, Shout Factory titles with its case intact, because for some reason people have found a way to market these slip cases to uh, 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 where they're actually selling them for like uh, as much as the films are worth <laughs> which is str which is strange i mean what's the difference of having a slip cover or not having a slip cover but anyways uh, this is my second copy of a film on blu-ray with the Horror Pack DVD, uh, uh, D, and it's signed by the director. 
It's a limited edition of this movie called Cell Count. It's what's on the inside that counts. Russell Carpenter reluctantly admits his wife, Sadie, into an experimental treatment facility for her life-threatening disease. While locked in this prison-like surrounding, they, along with six others, are unknowingly subjected to a cure that might just be worse than the disease itself. Starring Robert McKeehan, Haley Talbot, and uh, uh, Ted R Rooney, Sean McGrath, Christopher Toyne, and Daniel Baldwin. So, here we have it. The Horror Pack cell, uh, cell, uh, cell Count. And there's the back of it, just so you see, I guess, the um, uh, the director's name is Todd E. Um, something or other. Todd E. And it shows Fryman. Yeah, Fryman. Tied, uh, Todd E. Fryman. So that is a legit, uh, I believe, yep, that is a legit sig uh, 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 signature. So, read it. And uh, moving on. I've heard a lot about this uh, film. It's called The Jeffrey Dahmer Files. And I, th I think it's based on Jeffrey Dahmer. When drives, what drives a seemingly ordinary man to commit crimes commit a series of acts so heinous that it captured the attention of a horrified nation. In the summer of 1991, Jeffrey Dahmer was arrested in Milwaukee and sentenced to 957 years in prison for killing 17 people and dismembering their bodies. <coughs> the Jeffrey Dahmer Files explores the Midwestern city by meeting those who knew Dahmer during and after his hi hi hidden killing spree. Recollections from Milwaukee Medical Examiner Jeffrey uh, Je uh, Jen uh, Jensen, Police Detective Patrick Kennedy, uh, and neighbor Pamela Bass are interwoven with archival footage and everyday scenes from Dahmer's life, working collectively to shatter the facade of an ordinary man in leading a mundane existence. So this is directed by Chris James Thompson. This is called The Jeffrey Dahmer Files. Um, these two came in the mail. Um, I knew of these. Um, this one's called The Prodigy. I really like this. Um, uh, uh, there's one scene in here that I, re I really li like. It's about a kind of like a Damien kind of a, chi a child who ends up uh, uh, being re the reincarnation of some um, uh, some uh, <laughs> sadistic man who ends up dying in some police raid and he he evidently t takes the hand of his uh, victims or what, what whatnot and kills like an entire family, or and there's one survivor, or what, or whatnot, and the kid ends up uh, 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 inhabiting the baby of another woman uh, when when he dies, and uh, yeah, kind of an evil child kind of a thing, and it just keeps on going. Now, uh, the uh, the next thing I, th I thought was interesting was Jungle. Uh, this, uh, th this one was, uh, see, a lot of people think that his coming of age film was uh, uh, Daniel Rad Radcliffe's, uh, what broke him from Harry Potter was that black, uh, what, what was that f uh, film? It was a black woman? Um, uh, anyways, um... I believe that this film is what uh, what cut him from the mold of um, Harry Potter because uh, this uh, this one sets him apart. He plays a character that se uh, seems to be from a different country. He ha uh, he has um, 
Evidently, he goes off with three friends uh, on a hike with a guy that they've never met before, and uh, they uh, they all kind of want to do their own th uh, th uh, thing. The one guy does not want to uh, take the water, and uh, so on and so so forth. They uh, uh, they end up having to survive on their own. One of, the, of them gets hurt really bad, uh, badly and is never seen again. Another survives and still continues to look for his friend left behind, played by Daniel Radcliffe. And these are uh, based on the wor works and writings of a real man uh, sir, um, a book uh, and writings. And I believe that um, this film really tried to um, tell the story the way, it, uh, the, the way it was, although there were some fantastical things that happened. Um, <laughs> in fact, uh, I, I will rem always remember a worm co uh, coming, uh, uh, coming and growing out of uh, Daniel Radcliffe's forehead. So instead of a squiggly lightning bolt, you see a worm. <laughs> in any ca uh, case, um, this... Uh, film was directed by, let's see, directed by Jesse Ginsberg, I believe, or uh, Greg McLean, so, uh, something like that. But anyways, there we have Jungle and Prodigy. Prodigy, uh, 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 this was uh, from the producers, uh, uh, producer of The Exorcism of Emily Rose. So I was uh, fairly impressed with The Prodigy. I, I wasn't, wasn't unentertained. Now, uh, these particular films uh, uh, hail all the way from Germany. I do not know the director as of yet, but I do know the company. It, it, it is... Uh, Fekala Cost Production, and these are from 2009. Um, evidently, the um, first two are ca uh, called the Das Schwab uh, Schwabisch Sager uh, Sage Work Massacre. One and two, it means the uh, Swabian Sawmill Massacre. One and two. And from what I understand, they are actually with English subtitles, and they are gore films. So here is what the, this one has one and two on it. And uh, it looks like there are some pictures on the back. Um, I ended up paying like 44 pounds for both of them. Um, here is the third film, supposedly. And if you notice the, uh, on the front, they're actually signed. Um, so this one is called the Swabian Granny Gore, Te uh, 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 Swabian Granny Gore, uh, uh, Gore Terror. And it, uh, this one does say that it does have ex English subtitles. Now, one thing I want to mention is that sometimes when, when things uh, come from other countries, they, uh, they print their own shit out. Well, look at that. That actually looks like it was factory made. And, uh, I'll open up this one. And this one looks like it was factory made. So they actually went and professionally did these. So I, I, I was impressed. Uh, and um, I have not watched these as of yet. But I hope to. And I'll have reviews out eventually when, when I get a chance. So thank you for letting me share some of these uh, with you. I enjoyed some of the, uh, 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 sharing some of my small interviews of some of the ones that I've actually watched and some of the ones that I have not watched. Uh, I've at least explained what I know of them. Now, over the last year, uh, apparently these have been circulating and uh, um, Toxic Filth, actually, um, which is an underground uh, film distribution thing uh, that does not do factory uh, made films, but the, he just puts labels of his own uh, out on them um, and uh, maybe puts them out for like 50 to 100 copies. It's what you can get away with uh, when you do something like that, uh, when you make money. <laughs> but um, they circulated there. So it's interesting to see what what happens. 
um, with uh, some of the gore films that are out there. So in any case, um, thank you for listening. Have a great day, evening, or morning, wherever you are. Hopefully you enjoyed listening to what I had to share with you to, uh, today and tonight. And uh, I'm sure that I will have some more um, in the future to talk about. I just wanted some of these to build up and uh, hopefully um, you'll get copies of some of these down the road yourselves. So thank you for listening. Have a great day, evening, and morning, wherever you are. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. And I will have some more exciting uh, reviews and video collection uh, 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 videos for you in the future. You were good, kid. Real good. But as long as I'm around, you'll always be second best, see?